So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210-0478. This is the workbook one for, for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages uh, as a preview from the workbook section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 2, 5.3 cyber security and artificial intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many 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 more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper one workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper two as well. This is for algorithm programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper two along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your Cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh i hope you guys are doing fine so we were doing section number one and we were discussing 1.5 forces so today inshallah we are going to wrap up this uh, topic so continuing on we would start with section 1.5.4 that is circular motion to keep an object moving in a circular path it requires a force uh, that would act towards the center of the circle so that the object you are moving it can continue to spin in a circular orbit or in a circular motion and uh, when we are considering a satellite or uh, a natural satellite such as moon orbiting a planet such as earth then that force that force towards the center of the um, um, circular radius is provided by earth or that planet's gravitational field for a whirling bucket of water if uh, somebody is having a bucket of water in their hand and they are spinning it uh, well basically in a circular motion then uh, it is the force exerted on the handle of the bucket by the wielder that keeps the bucket keep on circling in us uh, keep on uh, moving in a circular motion this force has a distinctive name it is known as the centripetal force when an object is in uniform circular motion the velocity is constant but since the direction keep on changing then we say the axle uh, then it keeps on accelerating so this force this centripetal f uh, this uh, force that keeps an object accelerating but keeps it at a uniform speed in a circular uh, path it is that force is known as centripetal force centripetal acceler acceleration is center seeking as the name basically the name centripetal means center seeking force so centripetal acceleration or force is center seeking it is perpendicular to the velocity it always acts toward the center of the circular motion here's a diagram to explain you this is the radius of the circular path this is the object that is moving in a circular direction and velocity is in that direction and whereas the force is towards the center and the velocity and the force is always perpendicular at a 90 degree angle with each other if you are given such a diagram and you are asked where would the acting or resultant force be always draw us arrow towards the center or always mark the arrow towards the center as the resultant force whereas if by some reason this force is to disappear 
then this object would continue on in a straight path. A large force is needed if the speed of ball is increased uh, with mass and radius constant and if the radius of the circle is decreased then also you need a large force uh, to control the circular motion with mass and speed constant and if you are changing the mass of the ball but you are keeping the speed and radius constant again you are going to need a larger force to handle the cir new circular motion this force which acts towards the center uh, is known as the centripetal force center seeking force if the force is greater than what the string can bear then the string will break and the object or the ball would fly off in with steady speed in the straight line along the tangent if you are holding a ball attached to a string and you are circling it and uh, for some reason the string breaks this then this ball would continue on in a straight line in the direction of travel with the string broken uh, it uh, as stated with the newton's first law of motion that an object tends to keep on moving or keep on staying at rest it would not be thrown outwards the ball would not go in this direction or in that direction or in that direction it would continue on in a straight path in a straight line whenever an object moves in a circle there must be a centripetal force acting on it otherwise it cannot continue in a circular path when a car turns around a frictional force is exerted inwards by the road uh, we have already discussed when something moves friction uh, tries to oppose the motion so whereas when a car is taking a turn or a sharp turn or a circular turn then the passengers are uh, slightly bent toward the center of the bending circle this is due to the centripetal force where you might have noticed this while taking a turn that your body's instinctively uh, turns towards the center of the bend this is due to centripetal force now we have an example question a body P moves in a circle around a point S a force F keeps it moving in a circle this is a force this is S the center and this is P and this is the uh, path of the motion what happens if the force F suddenly disappears if this force suddenly disappears what would happen P moves directly towards S no P cannot move towards S P moves in a circle closer to S no P would not continue moving on in a circle P moves away from S in a curved path no that's also not possible we have already discussed if this force uh, deletes or if this force is eliminated the centripetal force then the object would continue in a straight line so option d p goes off in a straight line that would be the correct option this would be the correct option 1.5.5 turning effect of forces if a body under the action of a net external force is allowed to rotate the body will tend to turn in the direction of the applied force if you are applying force on an object and you have hanged or balanced it then the body would tend to turn in the direction of the applied force like if you are applying a, a force on this uh, bar that is balanced on this prism then the bar would tend to rotate in the direction of the motion like this edge uh, this uh, corner of the stick or the bar would try to go down whereas this point or this corner would try to go up moving in a anti clockwise direction the pivot in a uh, lever is called a fulcrum the pivot point in a system in a lever system is also called fulcrum you might uh, come across this word in some of the past paper questions as well so remember it Fulc fulcrum basically means the pivot point the point at which something or a stick has been balanced the movement of a force or torque is defined as the turning effect of force about a pivot and is the product of force and the perpendicular distance from the line of action if you are applying a force over here then the amount of this force multiplied by this distance which is between this point where force is being applied 
till the point where the object has been balanced means till the point end of pivot the multiplication of these two uh, quantities the force and the distance vertical distance is known as uh, sorry horizontal distance is known as torque or the turning effect of force or the moment of a force it has many names uh, you can either call it as torque or the moment of a force or the turning effect of the force so whenever you have to calculate turning effect of a force or the moment or the torque you apply this formula force multiply by distance and what distance the distance between the point at which force is being applied till the point where the system is being balanced at a pivot or through a pivot SI unit of moment is Newton meter and uh, this is also a vector quantity its direction is given by the right hand uh, grip rule perpendicular to the plane of the force and pivot point which is parallel to the axis of rotation R equals to or torque equals to F into D where F is the force applied R is the moment of force and D is the perpendicular distance from line of action to the pivot this part to balance a beam the total clockwise moment should be equal to the total anti-clockwise moment otherwise the system cannot be balanced like we have discussed before if a car needs to travel on a steady speed then it has to produce enough thrust or enough driving force that can equal the friction force or the opposing force similarly if you need to balance a stick or a bar on a pivot then you need to make sure that total clockwise moment is equal to total anti-clockwise moment so instead of rotating or tilting to one side in one direction the bar would stay still in a perfectly horizontal manner this is known as the principle of moment that the total anti-clockwise moment should be equal to total anti-clockwise uh, moment if we are talking about a balanced system uh, a balanced beam and uh, if you have to define experiment to calculate or to judge the principle of moments then simply balance of half meter rule or a stick or a meter rule at its center hang unequal loads m1 and m2 from either side and then alter their distance d1 and d2 from the center until the regular uh, ruler is balanced force F1 and F2 are exerted by gravity on M1 and M2 the mass 1 and mass 2 record the results in a table and repeat multiple values uh, find out when the ruler is balanced or uh, it is in equilibrium you simply uh, you sh your results the table you draw should show that total clockwise moment is equal to total anti-clockwise moment means the answer of F1 multiplied by d1 should be equal to f2 multiplied by d2 and how do you find f1 and f2 you simply mm, calculate the weight of mass 1 and mass 2 you would know their masses so just multiply them with 9.8 that would give them their weight and the experimental setup would look something like this the ruler would be uh, balanced on a pivot or you can draw a prism a large prism instead of this uh, oh, this uh, holder and uh, you can show masses like these or you can simply draw a string with small pans however you want to show them but showing two masses on uh, both sides is necessary example question shows a crane uh, lifting some bricks during the building of a house the weight of the bricks produces a turning effect on the arm of the crane about the point P this is the point P this is the pivot the weight of the brake is 1200 Newton so 1200 Newton would be the downward force whereas the distance between pivot and the downward force is 20 meters so if the force is going downwards that means the beam would tend to move in this direction in clockwise direction calculate the moment of this force using the distance marked on figure 6.1 so distance is 20 meter multiply by force that is 12,000 would give you uh, 2,40,000 Newton meter 20 multiply by 12,000
explain why the counterweight is necessary why have uh, they added this counterweight in order to balance the arm so that the uh, so that it can be adjusted according to the weight of the load and the arm would uh, be balanced so the arm would not move would not rotate about pivot it would stay in its position next we have 1.5.6 that is center of gravity it is an imaginary point in a body of matter where the total mass of weight of an object is concentrated or uh, where it is seem to act uh, where uh, the point in a body where the total mass or the total gravitational force tends to act the most when a body is in uniform gravitational field the center of gravity and the center of mass are the same so no matter uh, uh, if the examiner uses either of these words you know what it means usually if we have a regular object such as a cube such as a cuboid or a prism or a circle then this usually the center of that object is usually the center of the gravity as well as the center of the mass like you can simply draw lines from uh, one edge to another edge and the point at which those lines intersect that would be its center of gravity whereas for a uh, hollow ring the center of gravity remains in the center for a chair the center of gravity would be somewhere between its legs finding the center of gravity of an irregular shaped object now how would you find the center of gravity for an irregular shaped object for example if you're given a piece of cardboard like this so how would you find its center of gravity simply make a hole in the lamina this is usually uh, called lamina by examiner lamina is simply a piece of cardboard or plastic or any other such material that is cut in an irregular shape and hang it from a stand or from a um, from any stand and uh, let it come to a rest you should make sure the hole is big enough that the lamina can swing freely on a nail clamped in a stand like this you can hang it like this it will come to rest with its center of gravity vertically below a now tie a plumb line a thread and a weight to the nail and mark make a line on the lamina like uh, this is the line with uh, this is a thread line hang a th line uh, hang a thread with some weight and once the lamina becomes still mark a straight line using the thread and the plumb line hang the lamina from another position b means make another hole at some other position call it b and then repeat the process then hang the uh, make a third hole and hang the lamina from that third hole and then repeat the process by using a plumb line the point at which all three lines intersect is the center of gravity or the center of mass for that lamina like this you made a hole p uh, hole r and a hole q and then one by one you would hang these three uh, the lamina using these three holes and then you would mark lines using uh, a plumb line and a thread and the point at which this this point c at which all three lines cross each other that point is known as the center of gravity or the center of mass center of gravity is also associated with stability of an object stability means the ability of a body to restore to its original position after it has been slightly displaced or slightly tilted we have three types of equilibrium one is a stable equilibrium where uh, a small externally induced displacement or force uh, it produces a torque that tends to oppose the displacement and return the body to its original equilibrium if you tilt an object if you push an object and it comes back to its original position on its own like if you try a slightly tilt a chair and leave it it would come back to its original resting position on its own this is known as a stable equilibrium whereas an unstable equilibrium is one where you give a hard push to something and the object topples over or the object falls onto its side that is known as 
unstable equilibrium whereas a neutral equilibrium is one that when you apply some external force or push to it it, it does not produce any un equilibrium any uh, unbalanced moment at all hence uh, the object pretty much stays um, the object re the body remains in its new equilibrium that we say as a neutral equilibrium like this is a stable equilibrium if you tilt this uh, triangle it would come back to its position this is an unbalanced equilibrium if you slightly push this triangle it would fall over but as this is a neutral equilibrium even if you push this ball it would just roll over there would be no moment produced stable bodies tend to have a lower center of gravity a body is would be stable if its base area is wide if its center of gravity is low like you can see and uh, yeah these two are the only options over here this object has very less base area but very high and very high center of gravity hence it cannot be stable it would fall over Hence, the stability of an object can be improved by lowering its center of gravity and increasing its base area. An object will topple over if a perpendicular line from its center of gravity goes outside the edge of its base. If it is directly over the edge, we say object is about to be toppled over. Like over here, often examiner gives you uh, diagrams like this. It can be a bus, it can be a bottle or anything and the examiner is going to ask whether the object is about to topple over whether the object will topple over or it would come back to its position you would always be given the center of mass on that picture so simply you do one thing take a ruler and a pencil and from that center of gravity put your ruler on that center of gravity and mark a straight line mark a straight line towards the um, downside if that line is within the base of an object then you would say the object would come back to its position like in case of a the line the uh, vertical line is within the base this is the base of an object from here till here we would say this object would not topple over this in this case the line is directly on the on one corner of an object it is on the edge of an object so about this we would say the object is about to topple over in this case the line is going out of the edge of an object the line that you would draw from the center of mass if you draw uh, this is a perpendicular uh, this is a vertical line and as you can see it is going outside the edge of this object and this object would fall over and you cannot save it okay so remember these this little trip this li little trick for finding out which object is about to topple over which would not topple over and which is definitely toppled over it is just moments ago from falling over example question uh, this figure shows a thin sheet of metal um, with suspended from a hole in one corner at a the weight of the metal is 0.1 newton and the center of mass is at b the diagram is drawn full scale determine in detail how would you experimentally determine the position of center of mass one in one corner you, you are already given a hole a make a another hole over here and another one over here and then simply hang it freely from a nail and then use a plumb line to mark straight lines and uh, the point at which all three lines uh, cross each other cut each other that would be the point uh, that would be the point where uh, it is the center of the gravity or the center of the mass you simply need to describe that process in your own words make sure it is a six mark question so make sure to add some details The sheet turns because of the moment of the weight about point A. Define what is meant by the moment of the force simply. Moment is the product of force and distance. It is the perpendicular distance or shortest distance to line of action of force. Okay. Using a distance measured on figure 9.1, calculate the moment of the weight about point A. Simply what you need to do is, you would simply use your scale and you would uh, 
calculate the distance from A till B and and then you multiply that distance whatever it is with 0 0.1 and that would be your answer and the unit would be Newton centimeter then you are given some pictures 9.2 9.3 and 9.4 uh, these are wooden triangles and uh, you have to tell explain why figure 9.2 the piece of wood would fall to the right and in 9.3 it would fall to the left over here we would make a straight line and as you can see the line is within the edge of the object within the base area of uh, the base of this triangle is from here till here if I make a straight line from here till here then the line is coming inside the base Hence, it means the object will not topple over and it would come back to its or original position that would be to hence that would be towards the right hand side this triangle would become like this whereas in figure 9.3 this is almost at the edge of the this B, B point is almost at the edge of the uh, this triangle B so due to the turning effect of forces or the weight of the triangle this would be caused to fall on the left hand side see this is uh, this is this is within the limits so it would fall on the left hand side yeah it would fall on the left hand side it would not fall on the right hand side because this uh, center of gravity is within the base area so instead of falling towards the left hand side it would be tilted towards left hand side explain why the piece in 9.4 does not fall over because it is uh, balanced because the moment or the balance uh, the total anti-clockwise moment is equal to total anti-clockwise moment or uh, the moments cancel each other out or the weights cancel uh, weight is inside the uh, the base whatever you want you next it is asked to just how the thickness of the wood affects its stability uh, when you have thicker objects that means it has more more base area and like we discussed when an object has more base area it is more stable so that's it Thank you. I hope you have understood everything. If you have any problems, please do comment below and uh, I'll respond to that them as soon as possible. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Take care. Allah Hafiz.